good morning dear students today in class 11th we are going to start the very last chapter of the book hornbill and this is chapter is silk road by nick middleton fine so basically this particular chapter gives us a detail of religious journey religious journey okay and this is an account to rao to mount kailash rao to location is rao to mount kailash and it is a religious journey as i told you so in this one we have total four characters so one the narrator himself second his friend daniel third is his driver sitan and fourth a local guide uh local guide simply should say norbu so 1 2 3 and 4 so we have four characters in this chapter now narrator wanted to complete his kora kora means what first i just tell you suppose this is mount kailas and if we take a circle around it or a round around this particular kailas is called kora understood this is called kora so the narrator wanted to complete his kora fine so we know very well that at mount kailas snow is very common thing you can say the roads blocks because of ice and snow got it so temperature always near about 0 or even into minus 0 so narrator started to complete his kora at mount kailas so no snow no problem it means he thought that if there is no snow it means there is there will be no problem and he used shortcuts to reach mount kailas what is the silk road actually i just tell you first thing silk road was a old path old route to go to mount kailas from lahasa to mount kailas so that was the old route it means silk road now observation of natural beauty when they started their journey on the way they found some natural beauty like vast plains big plain area then gazelles they were moving here and there on the way wild asses cloud of dust obviously in the when they were in plain area there was dust and shepherd with flocks okay then people of hill area what did they do when they were going on the way they stared at the car of the narrator as well as they say hi hello to the narrator by waving by shaking their hand this thing that happens on the way thereafter as they went they crossed the dark tent of lonely places they had to go through some lonely places and they were like dark tents cave like cave and a huge black dog there they observed a huge black dog a huge black dog means they were tibetan mastiff a big dog in height physically structured you can say strongly they got tibetan mastiff and sta a sta uh, stared at the narrator's cars and barked these tibetan mastiff they stared at the narrator's cars and barked no fear of vehicles these dogs they do not have fear of vehicles like shepherd with their flocks the flocks they got uh, feared as the vehicle came on the road okay it's very common like sheep fine then these dogs they do not have any fear of vehicles now dogs chase the car also these tibetan mastiff the strong this these strong dogs they also followed the car of the narrator then next one valley scene they need they had to go through a valley and in valley what did they say snow capped mountain they saw mountains covered with snow okay valley was wide okay geographically it was wide and blocked with ice and totally there was ice 
द रोड हैज शार्प टर्न एंड ट्विस्टेड मीन्स द रोड ऑफ दैट हिल एरिया वॉज हैविंग शार्प टर्न एंड ट्विस्टेड सिटान ड्रो फास्ट मीन्स द ड्राइवर ड्रो द कार बट द बैंक वॉज सो टू स्टीप स्टीप मीन्स स्लीपरी ओके द कार वॉज स्टार्ट इन गोइंग बैक साइड सो एनी हाउ ही कंट्रोल दैट पर्टिकुलर कार एंड राइट नाउ दे वर एट फाइव थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड टेन मीटर्स अबव द सी लेवल ओके सो दिस इज द थिंग दैट दे डिड ड्यूरिंग देयर जर्नी ऑन द वे एंड आफ्टर दैट दे वर फेसिंग अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ स्टीप स्लो ऑफ द रोड ड्यू टू स्नो सो वट डिड दे डू अ रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन हाउ डिड दे गेट आउट ऑफ दैट प्रॉब्लम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दैट सिट एंड ग्रैब्ड डर्ट ही कलेक्टेड सम डर्ट फ्रॉम द आइस एंड फ्लंग ऑन आई सी रॉड एंड स्प्रेड इट आउट ऑन द आई सी रॉड एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोसेस एज ही ड्रॉ द कार फास्ट टू to overcome that problem of slippery road unfortunately the tire got punctured one tire of the car got punctured now daniel and narrator stayed outside of the car when sitan was doing all the things like uh, taking the car out from that slippery road these two members like daniel and narrator they stayed out of the car so that there will be less load in the car then a risk took them out of danger see it was a very risky to drive very fast on this slippery road now due to a uh, temperature headache to the narrator there was headache to the narrator he felt uncomfortable because of headache and next thing is geographical problem occur means as they were reaching on the height altitude was so high like 5200 something so right now there is a problem no smoking it was suggested to the narrator and daniel that there should be no smoking because the fuel was expanding fuel was expanding in the fuel tank so no smoking should be there so it was a suggestion and this was the geographical problem that they faced over there thereafter they reached at a small town like khor and it was a east west highway it was located on east west highway hor is the location name and followed old route they followed the old route like lahasa to kashmir and this is called hor uh, this this was on the hor location and daniel came back from hor location daniel decided to came back to lahasa and now we got to see sitan and narrator were alone now daniel was not with them after this location hor then at hor what do we find hor is a miserable place very pitiable place you can say like no vegetation there was no vegetation at all kept on going to mount kailas but they did not stop there for a long time they they kept their journey on to mount kailas okay and then they reached after hor they reached at the location darchan dear children this is just a journey detail that we see in this chapter from one location to another and do you remember what is the starting location of this journey that was rao to mount kailas okay they started from rao and still they did not reach at mount kailas so on the way first location was hor that was very miserable place and no vegetable at all vegeta vegetation at all and next was darchan at darchan the narrator faced such a great problem due to temperature and due to some physical disturbance like we see they reached at darchan narrators had nostril problem means due to cold he could not breathe properly one nostril was closed down totally he was tired he was hungry and 
struggling for breathing because his nostril was totally closed so he was facing a great problem in breathing and a sleepless night he spent in darchan at darchan i just tell you what happens after taking some kind of relax over there at darchan uh, first he wanted to sleep he slept on the bed but after some time suddenly he felt that his lungs were ready to burst out because he was taking breath from his mouth and as he closed his mouth nostrils were not responding him properly so that was the reason he thought that that his lungs will burst out so he stopped sleeping means he stood up and as he was standing he was feeling comfortable because of some kind of temperature uh, issues and as he sleeps down on the bed the problem the problem again comes to him so like this he passed a sleepless night at sleepless night at the location is darchan the location is darchan next one next morning he went to darchan medical college with sitan okay and got recovered over there the doctor gave him some kind of medicine and he felt comfortable and next night he could sleep sitan came back to lahasa now my dear children uh, uh, at hor sorry at uh, yes at hor at hor daniel went back and now darchan sitan went back so he is alone so at darchan what did he see what did the narrator see like chinese cigarettes shop and supplies of food at this location and at darchan he found only one cafe and that cafe was very little dark like cave and empty empty means there were no pilgrims okay there were no pilgrims at all now meeting with norbu so at darchan he was alone he wanted to do kora his aim was to reach to mount kailas and do kora but fortunately he met with somebody named norbu who is norbu a local guide as i told you earlier also he is a local guide and a tibetan he belong to tibet who worked in beijing in china okay he had worked in beijing in china in which department chinese academy of social science the department was chinese academy of social science okay and he could speak english language also he could speak english language also and he is a fat man not practicing buddhism so these are the characteristics of norbu like he was a local guide he belonged to tibet he had worked in beijing in chinese academy of social science and he could speak english very well and of course physically he was a fat man he my dear children he also wanted to do kora he also wanted to do kora and he never practices buddhism or buddhist he was not a buddhist at all then he told the narrator means norbu told the narrator that he could not do kora because completely complete means a complete round of the mount kailas because of his big tummy because physically he was heavy so his tummy did not allow him to take the kora complete okay to do the kora complete okay so in this one lastly the narrator himself did this kora and you know uh, in this story we got to know that what was the silk road silk road was from rao to mount kailas which was the old one like i told you lahasa to mount kailas there had been a route 
which was called silk route which was full of problems and it was which was very old in its itself like today we have some kind of uh, technology by which we can take help to move ahead like gps and all but at that time this silk road refers to the road that leads to mount kailas where people used to go and do kora as per their religion got it so this one is a complete journey that belong to our religion mount kailas and in this one he means the narrator faced so many problems on the way okay dear children this was just an outline of the story and in next video hopefully we will read the text and this will be and this is the very last chapter of the book hornbell okay dear children i hope you have got the point properly fine okay thank you have a good day